Okay, we are here at Walt Disney World in front of Cinderella Castle with James Silson, and he is the show director for Happily Ever After. And I just saw this show. It is a fireworks show, projection show, laser show, pyro show. You guys packed everything into this, didn't you? <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, this, you know, uh, in the process of developing a new spectacle for Magic Kingdom, you know, we were, uh, it was no easy feat to replace Wishes, which I think everybody loves. Uh, I know I love. It's one of my favorite spectacles of all time. And, um, but we took this opportunity to kind of reinvent, reimagine what a Magic Kingdom spectacle could be. You know, uh, we have all this new technology that we can actually bring in now uh, for spectacles. And so this, took, this gave us the opportunity to do things like add all this lighting and lasers and, you know, uh, uh, kind of plus up our projection mapping, try a new pyro product, uh, and really kind of create an immersive experience in our hub and our park uh, that we've never done before. It, it was it was immersive. It was just so seamless too. I think would be the word I would use to describe it. Yeah, it, you know it's it's incredible when you have a team of people working around you who are all experts in their different disciplines, and everybody gets inspired, right? Everyone gets inspired by the vision, by what you're trying to do. We wanted to make a statement with this spectacle. We wanted to empower people, uh, inspire people to go out and pursue their dreams and seize their happy ever after. It's not just take a passive approach, but actually an active approach in pursuing their dreams. Be brave, be bold, go out and get your happy ever after. And I think that was a message that resonated with me, with the team of artists around me, and designers, and uh, and through that, their passion, their collaboration, really brought magic to life here. And that's that seamlessness that you're talking about is really everybody united under one common vision and one goal of giving a message to our guests that you know will bring them uh, a great happy ever afters. Oh, it, it was just absolutely stunning. And one thing I really like because I love the Wishes soundtrack. I think very very beloved by many people. But this music, it's already going through my head. You you guys did an amazing job with the score. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have an amazing team of, of uh, you know, that worked on the music for us. Um, uh, Tim Hines, who is our arranger, and Roger Buddley, who is our music producer, and, um, you know, Matt Walker, who's like the head of music uh, for Disney. And, you know, when we sat down to create this piece, um, the first step we did after, well, the first step was coming up with the concept, of course, uh, and then we sat down and talked with the music, and literally, we went through every song that you've ever heard in any Disney uh, animated film, and we picked the ones that we loved the most, the ones that spoke the most to us, the ones that, kind of a nice combination of classic meets contemporary, you know, uh, and making sure that we grabbed all these pieces that we really loved, and then talked about how we wanted to present them. And I think something that you may have noticed when you're listening, and if you haven't, go back and listen again. Um, but, you know, we also took the opportunity to introduce these songs and, and arrange these songs in new and exciting ways, ways that we've never heard before. Uh, an example would be Love is an Open Door. You know, when you hear that, you know, when you watch the film, it's got a very different feel. And here, we took that, that beautiful song, that's really beautiful, and we put this haunting melody around it, and we slowed it down, and we just made it, made it so that the lyric means something different, you know, and, and, and brought out new life to that, that piece. There's just, you know, same song, and you, you hear it differently, and it immediately tells you love, you know, and we took the opportunity a lot throughout this to kind of give you these songs that you know you love, but let you hear them in, in new context. Yeah, I, th I think you did that really well, and just overall, because you've got some of the more contemporary films, but I really feel like this kind of was a good blend of the classic and contemporary, kind of updating it, making it just really relevant today, like whether you're a grandparent, whether you're a child, I think it really can speak to you. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I agree, you know, it's, it's funny, if you stand out in the audience, right, uh, you know, now that we're open, I can actually take a breath, right? I don't have to stare at the castle the whole time. And uh, and I'm looking around at me at the guests, you know? And to your point about multi-generational, you know, I have grandparents, I have parents, I have young kids, I have teenagers, and everybody is feeling something different with this piece, you know? And, but yet everybody is getting the same message and it's resonating with everyone. You know, a great example of this is my father, actually. You know, we watched the show together, and we opened, my family came down, we all watched it together. And uh, at the end of the, of the, the show, I turned to my father, and my father's tears pouring down his face, and he is so moved by this. My mom was, of course, and you expect that from your mother, but your father, you know, it, it means something different, mm -hmm. and um, it moved me, actually, and, and, and that's when you realize, you know, the kind of emotional impact 
you're having on your guests. And isn't that what we do this for? Is the emotional impact on our audience. That's that's what feeds us and that's what inspires us. And I mean, we're blessed to be able to, to have this opportunity to give this to our audience. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. And I think um, there's something probably, this isn't something that you just come and see once because, you know, honestly, I didn't know where to look because there was just so much going on. Yeah, it's, um, I, I think it's a repeatable experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure if I've seen everything yet. <laughs> um, and, you know, and it's interesting too, it's a different experience depending on where you watch it from. You know, and that's kind of the exciting thing here is that, you know, Magic Kingdom is known as the park that you can watch the spectacle from all these different places. You know, you can watch from the back of Main Street, you can watch it from the hub, you can watch it from the resorts, you can watch it from the lagoon, and it's a completely different experience, and you're still getting the same emotional uh, investment, the emotional kind of uh, uh, result. Um, I actually watched it from the lagoon, and it was gorgeous, because suddenly the lights and the pyro take on a whole other feel than being in the hub, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing, and I, you know, I love it, I think it's, it's, it's so cool, it's so exciting to be a part of something like this. Thank you so much. Absolutely.